And I'd like you to write down the name of someone that irritates you. <laughs> Your top pick. <laughs> All right. Just the first name. If they're sitting next to you, write someone else's name, just so they don't think it's you. Now, I'd like you to write down their name, someone that irritates you. And then I'd like you to write down a strength that they have. A strength. Now, sometimes um, it's hard to find this strength. It could be buried way down deep inside. Someone said to me, well, their black dot was like the whole page, Tamara. You know, it's the whole page. Uh, but it's there. Everyone has value, and if we don't find it, we've failed. Everyone has. If you want to improve relationships, you have to do with most people won't do. You, you, you know, you, you have a friendship with someone. Like people I know that have friends for 20 years, and they say one thing, and then it's like they're never friends again. You know, we've got to practice forgiveness to be forgiven. You know, uh, Christopher Reed said, uh, Pain is inevitable, but misery is an option. <laughs> we, have, we have to decide. So I'd like you to write down the strength and the evidence, something that proves it. Everyone has it. But again, you know, wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. Whatever you focus on, you're going to actually feel. So we want to find the good in people. So if you want to be healthier, you want to be happier, a lot of people don't think that this is what it comes down to. They think more stuff will make them happier. More stuff doesn't make you happier. I thought after my, you know, 20th coach purse, I would be happy. <laughs> I was for about, it was, each purse I got, I, it, the, the duration of happiness was less. So we always think all this stuff when we get there will be there, but that's not it. In 100 years, it's not going to matter whether you wear Nikes or Reeboks. It's not going to matter whether you have a $100,000 house or a million-dollar house. What matters is how you make people feel. Right? But we can't make people feel good if we don't feel good. So it starts with us. So I'd like you to take your note card and fold it in half. <laughs> and then fold it in half again. Like that. And then again like this. Just like that. And then again like this. And then again like this. Get all the anger out. <laughs> so it looks like this. Now this is your precious pearl. It's precious. So ladies, I'd like you to put it in your purses. Gentlemen, put it in your pockets. And your assignment is to keep this for as long as possible. With your change every day, pick it back up. It will remind you that people are sensitive, people are fragile. And our precious pearl, we have to remember there's good in this person. And our next program is going to teach you how to actually deal with this person when you approach them with this. But they're, they're your precious pearl. But I challenge you to go out and do a Just Cause card for this person. Change that relationship around. Unless someone is the bigger person and makes the change, you know, you stay angry at each other. And if you have a five-minute bout of anger, it suppresses your immune system for days. Five minutes. And then we wonder why we get head colds all the time, because we're angry. And we're not eating well. So if you eat, you know, all the, all the healthy food on the planet, but you're angry all the time and you're stressed out, you're, just, you're even more unhealthy than the person eating the hamburger. Does that make sense? That's why it's so important to work on all aspects of you. You know, there's a, uh, Dale Carnegie, I, I just love this man, he said so many wonderful things, and he said, you know, any fool can criticize. Anyone can do that, but it takes a person of character to understand someone and see their perspective and where they're really coming from. And sometimes we just don't know unless we ask the questions. Praise. How many people here like constructive criticism? A couple people do. What do you do when you construct? What do you do when you... Criticize. What are you left with? Absolutely nothing. Here's a problem. You say, I think you're great, but. And when you use the word but, you just discount the compliment that you gave someone and listen for it. You'll hear it all the time. You know, how many people have kids here? Oh, a lot of people. Okay. How many have teenagers? I'll pray for you. Okay. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> I don't have kids, but I can only imagine. <laughs> All right, so when a baby, you know, you have a little baby, and they take their first step, what do you do? Yay, you get the video camera. Oh, my God, I took his first step. Ah! Do you look at the little baby and say, that's it? <laughs> One lousy step? No. <laughs> But the problem is a lot of times we don't treat each other that way. You know, we need to encourage people all the time. For every, everything that they do, when they make improvement, give praise. Always give praise. It will never hurt you. Number five, speak well of people always. You criticize someone, it just comes right back to you. You ever hear the Buddha story? Anyone hear the Buddha story? No one? Well, Buddha was walking up a mountain. Okay, and there was a reporter following him, and the, the reporter was asking Buddha all these questions, and Buddha wasn't responding. So the reporter said, I want to get a rise out of this guy. I want, to, you know, I want him to talk, so he started criticizing him. And then he got to the top of the mountain, and uh, you know, Buddha turned to the uh, reporter, and he said, you know, uh, uh, you know, if I were to give you a gift, if you were to give me a gift, and I were to refuse that gift, who then would the gift belong to? The reporter said, well, if I give you a gift, Buddha, and you refuse it, I guess it would belong to me. And, he, and Buddha turned to the reporter and he said, well, I choose not to accept all these negative things you're saying to me. I give them back to you. So take what's good and only what's good. 